Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Ed and Lorraine Warren return in this threequel, this time with Michael Chavez at the helm rather than James Wan. Lorraine, what's wrong? I'm fine. Lorraine! The film is actually the eighth installment in the Conjuring universe, and although it may not reach the heights of The Conjuring 1 or 2, it's still a heck of a lot better than The Nun or Annabelle. The story is based on the real-life trial of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, who killed his landlord and blamed demonic possession. I invited this thing into me, and that's the reason that he's dead. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga reprise their roles as the Warrens, and their presence and chemistry is largely what make the movie work. Full of suspense, atmosphere, and a few good jump scares, The Devil Made Me Do It is a must for fans of the franchise. Oh, damn. Number 9. Violation Directed by Canadian filmmakers Madeleine Sims Fewer and Dusty Mancinelli, Violation makes for a thrilling directorial debut. Sims Fewer also stars as Miriam, a woman in a crumbling marriage who goes to visit her sister and brother-in-law, husband in tow. I feel like we might have to go back early. Does he just really not like it here? Or? No. Unfortunately, Miriam suffers a horrible tragedy during the visit, and she proceeds to embark on a quest for personal revenge. This is a very raw and very brutal film that gives viewers an unflinching look at assault and the fractured mental states that can result. doesn't make for easy viewing, but if you have the stomach for it, Violation is a powerful film. Oh, I'm saying. Number 8. Slacks Another Canadian film, Slacks wonderfully toes the line between horror and comedy, and never takes itself too seriously. This comedic tone is largely due to the movie's outrageous premise, as it concerns clothing store employees being attacked by a pair of possessed jeans. What happened? What is that thing? What thing? That thing. It killed everyone in the store. I don't know what that was. Mass hallucination. Mass hallucination? Slacks is a ton of fun, mixing incredibly gory thrills with hilarious satire aimed squarely at corporate culture, materialism, and high fashion. It's designed as a B-movie, complete with a silly concept, intentionally over-the-top acting, and corny visual effects. While it's certainly not a terrifying movie, it is a quirky and enjoyable way to spend 77 entertaining minutes. Number 7. The Queen of Black Magic Originally released in its native Indonesia back in 2019, The Queen of Black Magic received a domestic release through the horror streaming service Shudder in 2021. Horror fans would do well to check it out. The story concerns three men who take their families to visit the orphanage in which they grew up. While there, they must contend with long-buried personal traumas, a missing girl, and menacing otherworldly entities. The movie tells a fantastic story filled with mystery and shocking plot twists, and it's drenched in a wonderfully eerie atmosphere. Add in a solid dose of bloody violence, and you have an interesting horror movie that serves as a welcome introduction to Indonesian horror. Stop! Stop! Money, stop! Number 6. The Stylist Played by the talented Najara Townsend, Claire is a lonely hairstylist who has difficulty socializing and finding friends. That's why I do hair. Hair? Yeah. You get to go in and out of people's lives. You hear stories. You give life advice. It's almost like having a family. She also murders her customers and cuts away their scalps so she can wear their hair. So, there's that. Claire's serial killing ways seem to end when she befriends a customer named Olivia, who asks Claire to style her hair for her upcoming wedding. Is she any good? She is amazing. She was my first choice. And the stuff she does with hair, judge her. Oh, she's so good, why doesn't she do waves? The Stylist is a great horror film that proves suitably stylish, violent, and surprisingly complex. 
Claire makes for a fascinating villain protagonist, who manages to be surprisingly sympathetic and relatable. Townsend is remarkable in the role, and she helps elevate the stylist beyond typical genre fare. Claire, are you okay? <laughs> no. Number 5. Lucky a bizarre and incredibly creative horror film, Lucky was written by and stars Rhea Grant, who's most well known for playing Daphne Milbrook in Heroes. Grant plays a self-help book author named May, who suffers violent visions. The movie begins as a typical home invasion thriller, as May sees a man breaking into her house. What are you doing here? <laughs> Get out of my house. However, her husband informs her that this vision is a nightly occurrence, and everyone close to May refuses to explain her confusion. The movie is told entirely through May's point of view, and it begins to incorporate Groundhog Day-esque elements as the violent invasion repeats over and over again. I'm gonna go, and then I'm gonna go to sleep, so I can wake up and start it all over again tomorrow. Lucky is as scary as it is mysterious and tantalizing, proving one of the most intelligent horror movies in some time. I'm not in danger from my husband, I'm in danger from the man that comes to my house every night to try to kill me. Number 4. PG Psycho Gorman Following the Lovecraftian The Void and Leprechaun Returns, writer-director Stephen Kostansky created the crazy genre mashup that is Psycho Gorman. It follows a young brother-sister duo who accidentally unearth an alien monster. No man can encompass my dark will, though my enemies will sometimes refer to me as the Archduke of Nightmares. Oh, well, that sucks. The brother and sister befriend said monster, and he becomes their exceptionally violent companion. Psycho Gorman is utterly delirious and a creative throwback to 80s movies, complete with rubber suits, practical gore effects, and a Spielbergian story involving children, adventure, and otherworldly entities. Your time is up, evil one. Oh man, get out of here, lady! It also finds a lot of time to poke fun at itself, parodying its obvious influences. Fans of 80s cinema will find more than enough to love here. Look at all the hunky boys! I do not care for hunky boys. Number 3. A Quiet Place Part 2 John Krasinski's 2018 film A Quiet Place took a unique premise and a crafted tense emotional story that made for one of the best horror films of the year. How do you follow that up? Well, ask Jim from The Office because he delivered again with the sequel. Oh my god! Expanding on the story and lore of its predecessor, A Quiet Place Part 2 sees the Abbott family set out in search of other survivors. It proves to be a fraught journey, because as we all know, apocalypses bring out both the best and worst in people. I don't know why you came all the way up here. There's nothing left. Once again, Emily Blunt, Millicent Simmons, and Noah Duke turn in excellent performances, as does Killian Murphy as Emmett. It's an edge of your seat horror adventure that'll leave you speaking in hushed tones for hours afterwards. The people that are left are not the kind of people worth saving. Number two, The Vigil. Having premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival all the way back in 2019, The Vigil was a long time coming to the domestic market. This is an example of religious horror being heavily steeped in orthodox Jewish traditions. It won't let you live. We have to go now. The story concerns a young Jewish man named Yaakov, who must hold vigil over a deceased member of his religious community. He is subsequently accosted by evil spirits. The Vigil is a great little horror movie that remains firmly fixed to Yakov's point of view and the horrific experiences he undergoes in the dark. The movie also finds time to explore Yakov's character, specifically the ways in which he grapples with his Jewish identity. Number 1. Saint Maud This horror film shares some commonalities with The Vigil. It also premiered at the Toronto Film Festival in 2019, and it's also steeped heavily in religion. 
Morpheth Clark plays Katie, a palliative care nurse going by Maud after converting to Roman Catholicism. So this is a recent conversion. When you pray, do you get a response? Maud becomes dangerously obsessed with saving her new client, a terminally ill ex-dancer suffering from stage 4 cancer. The Lord forgives that which is said in anger. He knows your heart. The Lord. Yes, God. Maud makes for a disturbing protagonist, and viewers are constantly subjected to her troubling thought process. Saint Maud has been compared to the works of screenwriter Paul Schrader, particularly Taxi Driver and First Reformed. Like Schrader's unsettling protagonists, Maud slips further and further into madness, her deteriorating mental state proving just as scary and hard to watch as the supernatural visuals. Take some